In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, one God and man. This story of the Pharisee and the sinful woman is one of the most impactful stories, love stories between God and any person. At the same time, it shows us the contrast between love and between self-seeking agendas like between the Pharisee and the sinful woman. We heard about she washed his feet. And this is a great example of how we ought to serve one another, how we ought to serve in the church. It is the service of washing the feet. That is compelled by love, that is compelled by feeling indebted to God. Actually, it is a great opportunity today as we are coming out of a very successful um, weekend, last one, when most of the church got together and served. And in general, when we need to evaluate how we do things in the church, how we serve, how we offer our life, our gifts, our talents, which mindset we come with. Is it of Simon, the Pharisee, that is really busy with who is doing what? who is righteous, who is not righteous, who is worthy, who is not worthy, who has the lead, who does not have the lead, or that sinful woman who, out of her own feelings of needing to be forgiven, feelings of love, she poured everything she had, and she washed the feet of Jesus. This also reminds me of the story of the prodigal son in Luke 15. There were two brothers, the eldest who uh, lived in, in the house all his life, served his father, did everything right. And then the younger son, of course, you know the story, who took away everything, and then he came back asking for forgiveness. The eldest son, like Simon the Pharisee, was bitter. He was in the house, but he was bitter. He wasn't there for the right reasons. He compared, he judged. He felt that he deserved to get all the attention. And the younger son, the sinful, the rejected, Uh, and the outcast came, and with one word, he regained everything. Service. How do we serve? And why do we serve? For every person who offers his or her gifts and talents and time, I think their motive should be driven by a verse. What is your verse that is driving you to serve? What is your verse of your life, if if we may say? As I shared with you many times uh, back then, I have a verse that is driving me to serve. I have a verse that I call the verse of my life. And I, and I, I will share it with you today again, if you still remember it. But I would encourage you to dig deeper and examine what is the verse that is leading you to serve, to help, to offer your time and gifts. Mine is from 2 Corinthians 5.15. And, and somehow it falls in the same line with the, with the gospel of this morning. 2 Corinthians 5, 15, actually 14 and 15, but I will, I will say 14 to uh, within the context. For the love of Christ 
compels us. In other version or in the Arabic version, Mahabbat al Masih tahsurna, for the love of Christ surrounding us, engulfing us, encompassing us. Because we judge that, and this is the one, that if one died for all, then all <laughs> died. And this is the one. And he died for all that those who live, which me and you, should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. This is my life's verse. And this is the verse that, is, that keeps me checked and, and keeps me on, on track every time I feel tired, unmotivated, or just wondering why. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. And I'm, I'm encouraging you to think about your verse. He died. We all know that Christ came, died for us, redeemed us, saved us. But what is the purpose? What is the purpose? Is it for me to take it and say thank you and okay, um, I'll be in heaven? No. That those who live because of his death, which you and me should live no longer for themselves. Service is to live not for yourself anymore. To be a man of God, to be a woman of God, without titles. Service is not about titles, who's doing what, but how you are offering your life as a gift of love because you, you have been loved, because you have been forgiven, because you have been redeemed. How you are compelled to offer everything you have for the glory of him who died for you. He died that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died and rose again. David, the prophet, in Psalm 116, 8 to 9, he talks about the same mindset. Whenever you serve, whenever you do anything for the glory of God, have this mindset. Thank you for doing that. <laughs> Psalm 1, 16, 8, and 9. For you have delivered my soul from death, my ears, my eyes from tears, and my feet from falling. Again, a sense of being saved, a sense of being forgiven, a sense of being indebted. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits toward me? Ah, I have received so much beyond my expectations, beyond my worthiness. What shall I render? What shall I give back? Number one, I will take up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. There is a personal journey. I'm walking in and the path of my own salvation. And then I will pay my vows, this is number two, I will pay my vows to the Lord now in the presence of his people. Our service, whatever we do for the glory of God in the church or outside of the church, that I am paying my vows, I am paying my reaction to his love, because whenever we are loved by someone, we love back, right? We love back, whether your spouse, your fiance, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your significant other. When you are so loved, you are compelled to love back and say, I'm committing to you. This love I am keeping in my life forever. It's worth keeping. It's worth living for. It's worth vowing for, I am yours and you are mine. The same with the Lord. When you taste <coughs> the taste of forgiveness, when you taste the, the sweet taste of being loved, regardless of what you do, who you are, you say, 
I'll pay my vows. I am all yours. To the Lord now in the presence of all his people. Last weekend, we have seen an example of complete love and complete humility and simplicity. Yes, we had our human weaknesses. We had our, we had our little struggles because we are people. But it was an example of how a service, how a good time in church should be spent. We loved and we gave everything without seeking recognition, without seeking glory. It was for just love. And my hope is that as we move forward with the church, with our plans, with our spiritual plans, which is the most important one, that we become the people of God that he wants us to be, that we have this spirit of humility. Allow me to share a um, slide, um, and I ask for your, your, your permission, but did you respond? Okay, thank you. Uh, yesterday we had a servants meeting, uh, and our very own Dalel just shared with us um, her uh, wisdom. And um, one of the slides, and I'll just uh, take over the screen here, George. Um, she made the distinction between a volunteer and a servant. Can you see my stuff? <laughs> okay, it was just a, a picture, so, but I will read it for you. Really, she helped us understand the, the distinction between volunteer work and service work. A volunteer who is Mainly, it's about this person feeling good, self-centered. He or she wants to look good. They act out of, you need me. You're lucky I am here. <laughs> it's my expertise that you should appreciate, or I only do this that suits me. This person has their own agenda, focused on how much they give. It's about making connections, about looking good, about knowing the leadership, about being closer to the servants, to Abuna, to the bishop. Uh, it's somehow about feeling good. This is not to bash any volunteer work, but it is the mindset that I am coming out of um, a place of um, top-down, I am giving you something, versus the person who is a servant. This person is Christ-centered, wants God to look good. So, like, here is the mindset. When we come to church, when we serve, when we do when you do your Sunday school, when you do your uh, Boy Scouts, when you do your festival, or, or, or any kind of, of work, do you think about, I should look good, or my, my whole intention is to make God look good? No demands and no agenda. And this person goes with the need. Tell me what do you need, and I'm here for you. Where is the need? Focus on how much God gave, give that person. I, again, I am compelled because I have been loved, I have been forgiven. I've been given so much, I am yours. It's about commitment, I'm committed, regardless of, of who is in charge, regardless of who is acknowledging my work or not acknowledging my work, regardless of anything, this is my personal commitment to pay my vows and praise the name of the Lord in front of people. It's about humility. Thank you, Dalel, for sharing this, and, and, and really, I hope this will be our mindset. Again, out of love, we are driven to give, to serve, to understand, to forgive, to bear the burdens of 
other people only out of love. If we serve out of any other agenda, please, please, please search your heart. Allow God to search your heart. And if you have any way in your heart that is not for his glory, let him guide you. Let him search you. Let him purify you. Six years ago, we started this church with almost nothing, although God gave us everything. And one of the highlights of the church that I keep hearing, and I hope I'll keep hearing for many, many long years, is that we feel it is simple, we feel we are part of it, we feel it is welcoming, and it is my church. And it is not because of me, it is not, it's not because of anybody, it's because of everybody, that we agree that whoever steps foot in this church will feel loved, will feel welcomed with the spirit of simplicity, spirit of love, and washing the feet. And, and my prayer and my hope is that as we grow even more, we will keep this mindset. We will not volunteer in this way, but we will serve. To him all glory forever. Amen. This is